We have a major problem here in Australia, guys. Now, when I say a problem, it is a problem today. It won't be in a few years' time. I have this discussion with a lot of people here. There is a thing called the solar duck curve. In California, you guys had the same problem up until recently when you had a bunch of the biggest batteries in the world come online and it's transformed the California grid. Well, now here in Australia, we are essentially being kind of being taxed a little on solar. They're calling it a solar tax or a sun tax. And whilst it's not truly completely accurate, the reality is here that your feed-in tariff, how much the, you know, the, the electricity companies pay you to send solar into the grid has just come down enormously. And the reason is because there's too much electricity being generated by all these solar panels in the middle of the day. But that's about to change. That's going to change so quickly. And I keep telling people this, guys, I know it sounds bad. I know that you're making less money from your solar. That will change. One of the big reasons is massive batteries like this. Now, this is essentially a Tesla battery, and it's going to be, I believe, the third biggest battery in the world when it is completed. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It is phenomenal to see you guys. And today, I actually had my new solar system installed on my house. My new solar system it is massive. It's It covers, I'd say, about 75% of my available roof space. So guys, I'll have a new video up showing you what happened, um, how this all happened. It Well, guys, I was looking for a new solar system, but I wasn't looking for what happened here. I Someone found out I was looking for one. And anyway, it's a kind of a story there. I'll have a new video about it. So make sure you tune into that video. It's going to be kind of interesting. Kind of an interesting story. But anyway, I'm really excited with this new solar system. But I've looked at the feed-in tariffs for solar and what I'll be making off the grid. It's not very much, right? Yeah, unless you're part of a virtual power plant. Now that changes. You get a battery, you can fix this problem yourself, right? You can basically keep all the solar energy you generate during the day, feed it into the grid at night, and make a whole bunch of money. So I have some more videos about that, how you can go about doing that, why it actually makes more sense than you think to get a battery, even though a lot of people say it doesn't. Speaking of batteries, this massive battery is in Western Australia. Now, from what I've seen, guys, Western Australia, the key city there is Perth. I lived in uh, Western Australia for two years, and I barely remember it not being sunny. I think looking at weather data, it is the sunniest place in Australia. And that is crazy, right? You're talking about more than 300 days of sun per year. Therefore, there's a lot of solar in Western Australia, but there is a big duck curve. In other words, there's way too much solar being produced in the middle of the day. And then when, you know, the sun goes down, you have this big problem because that's when anyone, everyone wants to use their energy. It's when they want to use their air conditioning, they get home from work, that's when they want to use their heating. It's winter. Yeah. This big, massive, massive battery will help transform Western Australia. And it's basically gonna be so big, it's being built in two stages. The first stage is a 219 megawatt, 877 megawatt hour um, massive battery. And that will soak up huge amounts of rooftop solar in the middle of the day, shift it to the evening peak, like what you guys have done in California. This will unquestionably make electricity cheaper. And it's unquestionably going to get rid of any existing fossil fuel generation, if there is any by the time it's finished. Make sure you don't have any kind of investment whatsoever in a fossil fuel generating company, like a power plant company, because they're all going to be extinct within a very short period of time. The second stage of the battery will be even bigger, 341 megawatts and 1,263 megawatt hours. So the end stage size of this battery will be 560 megawatts and 2,240 megawatt hours. Like I said, it's really hard to measure this stuff, but it's either the second, third or fourth biggest battery in the world by the time it's completed. And like I said, Tesla is building this battery using Tesla's mega packs. Now guys, this is massive for Tesla. Tesla makes more profit from a single mega pack than it does from selling 99 electric cars. It has to sell 100 electric cars to make a similar profit to what it makes off a single mega pack. That's crazy. 
and Tesla's energy division has grown astronomically. We're talking about second quarter of this year. Uh, it more than doubled. Now, experts are saying between now and 2030, battery deployment will increase by more than 600%. It'll be the fastest growing industry in the world. And yeah, as you can see, Tesla is winning a lot of these big contracts. Now, the energization of the first stage of the Colley battery was announced by Neon Australia. They're actually a French multinational power company, and they are deploying, they've used Tesla in the past to build out their big batteries, and then once again using Tesla again. Now, they said the battery facility will be completed and in full operation by the end of this year. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. I mean, Tesla is so insanely fast at building these batteries. Imagine if um, you know, a nuclear company said, guys, we can build you a new nuclear power plant. It's only gonna take us, uh, how many months? Five months? No, it's actually four and a half months. Imagine if you heard that. I mean, there'd be nuclear power plants all over the world, right? Even though they're ridiculous, ex ridiculously expensive, they still would be. Now that's why batteries will displace fossil fuels. It's one of the, not just why, but it's one of the reasons. Keep in mind as well, Tesla's now using lithium ion phosphate batteries. So not only, uh, not only are the cells that basically Tesla are using in those batteries much cheaper for Tesla, they last around twice as long. Tesla is saying that you get about twice as many cycles out of these new Tesla mega packs. And they're a little bit cheaper than the previous generation in terms of what it costs, what Tesla is charging you as a, you know, if you wanted to buy a Tesla mega pack, they're a little cheaper now. Now, if you buy this many Tesla mega packs, Tesla will give you a big discount. So we don't know exactly what kind of profit Tesla would make in this situation, but it would still be a hell of a lot of money. The Coley batteries are being built along a nearby 500 megawatt, 2000 megawatt hour battery being developed by state generation company Synergy in the same city that has hosted the state's coal generation facilities for half a century. So these batteries will basically, along with solar, get rid of these massive coal power plants. So what we're talking about guys here is two mega batteries. The second of these, Tesla's not building this one, it's being built by Synergy, a 500 megawatt, 2000 megawatt hour battery. Now the Tesla one is 560 megawatt, and 2,240 megawatt hours. Just these two batteries would be enough to completely eliminate the duck curve in Western Australia and possibly get rid of the last remaining coal power plants in the state. It's very, very likely. Reneweconomy.com.au says that these last coal generators will close by the end of the decade. So probably in five years or less, but the batteries along with other facilities have a specific task of addressing the problem of growing rooftop solar. So more and more solar is being built and not just on rooftops, but also solar farms. And that obviously is causing these massive amounts of electricity to be, to be produced during the day. That is reducing operational demand on the grid to levels which the market operator says makes it difficult to handle. So the first stage of NEON's Colley battery has been contracted for two years to make 197 megawatts of battery storage capacity available for four hours during the middle of the day between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now that will remove all that electricity from the grid, all that solar electricity, and then it will put it back into the grid between 4.30 p.m and 8.30 p.m. It will, apparently they'll be paid a lot of money for this. After the contract for the first stage was announced, Neon announced an increase in anticipated earnings of $160 million a year from 2025, and much of it coming from the solar duck contract. Renew Economy says, once the second stage of the battery is built, Neon's combined battery will have the ability to charge and discharge 20% of the daily demand of the entire state of Western Australia. So this is a single battery that can charge and discharge 20% of the entire state, which is it's all, almost like a, it's almost like Texas. It's enormous. 20% of a single battery every day. That is insane. Neon is currently under a 10 billion takeover bid from Brookfield, but they did build the Hornsdale battery, uh, the Victoria Big Battery at Moorabool, and the Bolgana batteries. It's commissioning a battery in the ACT. 
It's building its Western Downs battery in Queensland and the Blythe battery in South Australia. Now, many of those batteries were built by Tesla. And interestingly, um, Neon, they have, they actually built, they built some of these batteries in a first stage by Tesla. And then they've said to Tesla, well, that battery works so well, we made so much money, let's double the size of that battery. So batteries are incredibly, incredibly valuable when combined with solar. And because of the lowering costs of batteries, the declining cost, and the increase in their lifespan, it means that they're simply a no-brainer. And it means that Tesla makes a lot of money whilst we don't have to waste our solar anymore. Thanks for watching.